I'm Lauren Rosenthal McManus. Um, Matt asked us today, you've heard this a couple of times, to talk about the process and purpose of our work. Why won't it keep going on its own? Um, and uh, I think before I talk about the how and why of my work, I also want to just give a brief synopsis of the what. So I make maps of watersheds. Um, some of them are really big. This one's about 15 feet tall by 12 feet wide. You can see me up on a lift um, installing it. It has a couple, it's all made of cut paper and there's a couple of video monitors um, embedded into the map that have other kinds of stories, um, oral histories and historic maps in them. Some of my maps are very small. These are temporary tattoos that I made to go along with this exhibition of specific um, creek watersheds um, in the region. And it was about kind of helping people to identify themselves with those specific places in their landscape. Um, some of the work is sculptural. This is uh, five foot tall by three foot wide by two foot deep um, cut paper map of the Delaware River watershed. And uh, it's meant to, you're supposed to kind of come up to it like it's another body. Um, so it sort of mirrors back at you. Some of the work is entirely digital. This is um, made completely in ArcMap, and um, it's a remapping of the um, contiguous United States where state boundaries are defined um, by watershed divides. So it's kind of posing the question, what would our culture look like, oops, <laughs> um, if we defined ourselves around water? And sometimes the work is made using completely natural materials collected on site. So this piece um, is of a creek in Pennsylvania called the Tohican Creek uh, Watershed. And um, it's made out of rocks that I collect while taking walks along streams, grinding them into pigment, um, and then uh, tracing the contours with, with that um, pigment that's made into watercolors by mixing it with gum arabic. Sorry, the, I don't know why my, it must be on like an auto timer, they keep jumping, so I'm trying to um, stay on track. Um, some of these, like this, is made to last for a long time. It's on paper and it's framed, um, but some of these pieces are made directly on the wall and at the end of an exhibition, I'll actually just wipe it off with water. Um, so now I'm gonna get a little bit into the how. Um, I've kind of divided my process into probably three sections. One of them um, is analytic. So all of the work begins with a foundation of data and um, working in ArcMap, you can see here, just converting um, elevation data into topo lines. I wanna say a little bit more about this. So um, the, the analytic piece, um, is really about composing an image um, and deciding what goes in and what stays out and selecting, emphasizing, and eliminating certain pieces of data. So there's no cities on my maps, there's no roads on my maps, there's no labels of any kind on my maps. There are just hydrological and topographical lines. Um, the other part of my process I call the sensual piece. Um, and that's just walking out in the woods and on streams and getting my feet dirty and wet sometimes um, and collecting rocks and seeing what's out there and smelling the smells and feeling the feels. <laughs> um, and that's probably my favorite part of the work. In the work that I make using rocks, um, I end up with little piles like this from various streams that I've walked along um, and I sort them by color. And um, the process of grinding them, I do by hand. So that kind of brings me to the next part of my process, um, which I call the meditative part of my process. It usually involves repetitive tasks that take a long time to do. So in, in um, Matt's talk, he showed himself doing cut paper stencils. That's the same kind of process. It's a very meditative sort of thing. Um, these are actually my tools. I use a five pound sledge and then uh, this little hand mortar and pestle, um, grind the stones that I've collected up, run them through a sieve until they are a fine powder like this. 
Um, I don't want them to be perfect. When you really make watercolor paints in fine art, um, you use a, a glass that's etched and, an, and another piece of glass that's etched, and you really rub things down to the finest, finest powder. And I want my pigments to be a little bit grainy. So um, even though they look really pretty fine, and it, is take, it does take a lot of work to get them down this fine, um, they're not as fine as you know, watercolors that you would buy at the art store. Um, I'm glad that Nick showed a little bit of his process of uh, vinyl stencils, um, because that's also a part of my process a lot of the time when I'm making these pieces, because I want to mask off an area that I don't want to get painted, because I want the streams to remain um, looking like streams. And so there's the paper there. Um, for these pieces, I use a ruling pen. That's what that tool is up there. Um, and you can see some of my little tests where I was trying to figure out, you know, how I wanted the line quality to be. And you can see all the little gritty um, bits of stone uh, in there. You can also see kind of on um, this image of the, of, of the piece in process um, a little bit of a couple of things. One is the vinyl that's sticking on there as a mask. You can see it sticking up in the middle of this. This is one of the Finger Lakes. I did a whole series of these of the Finger Lakes. And then you can also see where it's not painted, these little lines where I've actually printed um, the topo lines so that I know where to go. So tracing is one of these meditative processes. A lot of my work involves tracing. Um, my very first map that I ever made was actually one of these rock drawings. It was, uh, I covered the entire wall of a gallery with rock and then I erased the line that the river makes with river water itself. So it sort of evokes the process by which a, a river marks the landscape um, through erosion. And can this play? Um, this is just a quick time-lapse video of me making one of these giant wall drawings um, so that you can see the height of the ladder there. Um, this piece, the piece itself is about 12 feet tall. I think the ceiling of this space is probably 16 or 18 feet tall. Um, and uh, the first part that we just went through was me masking off the edges of the watershed and just the, the main body of this piece of the Delaware River. Um, and then right now I'm removing all of that tape um, and just cleaning things up. And this is an entire day, and you can kind of see how now the lights are off in the back gallery because everybody left and I'm still working on this thing. Um, and then this is me coming back the next day, and here I am just erasing out, tracing over those lines of the streams um, and uh, doing that same thing. So this is another entire day of just little by little um, making these marks. So that kind of covers the process piece. I'll just go to the end of this video so as to not take too much time. But again, now it's night. <laughs> um, and just cleaning it up and that's the end of it. Oh, how do I get to the next slide? Ha. Um, so lots of times it involves rocks, but sometimes my tool is an X-Acto knife. So um, at this point, these things can be made by 3D printers or laser cutters, but this um, is a topographic map of one piece of the Delaware River watershed. It's part of a series of all of the sub-basins of the Delaware River watershed, um, but every layer is cut by hand with an X-Acto knife. Um, and these are also cut by hand. These are parts of the Hudson River system, and uh, they just have a little wooden armature around them and they're held off of the wall. Actually, I think a couple of these were shown a few years ago at a NASIS meeting. So now I just wanna to get to the why of this. Why do I do this? Why do I spend all of this time thinking about rivers and, um, and making these marks? Um, my background is as an environmentalist and activist. Uh, these pictures are from before I went to, in between undergrad and graduate school, I worked um, for several years organizing an environmental education program that uh, worked with fourth graders on the banks of the Haw River. And um, you can see how maps played a part 
um, in, in, this, uh, in this program, and also how art played a part in this program. Um, and what I want to say about activism um, in this work is that I think that everyone in this room probably knows this, but maps are incredibly powerful. They are not just rep representations of the world, but they are also proposals for the world, and they also create the world by affecting what we believe about the world and about ourselves in the world. And by making maps that um, express, uh, by the, the maps that I make, because I'm presenting just watersheds um, without anything else clouding them up, I think I'm, what I'm trying to do is present a vision of the world that reframes the boundaries of community and allows um, audiences to, see, to find themselves in a map that doesn't have the same kind of locational um, navigation systems as most maps that they're looking at, um, and allowing them to sort of identify themselves in that map and identify with that map. Um, I also believe that beauty is seductive, and by making maps that um, are beautiful, um, I think that leads to a kind of curiosity and engagement in thinking, in thinking about what that, you know, what that map means and why to look a little bit deeper. Um, that leads me to this, which is another part of my work that I'm very excited about. Um, these are some pictures of a workshop that I recently led at the Nurture Nature Center in Easton, Pennsylvania. And I've just begun starting to kind of open my practice to a more collaborative, um, community-based model. I'll obviously still continue making the personal work, but um, in, I've been starting to lead watershed mapping workshops um, and working with communities and giving presentations about maps and about watersheds and um, water quality issues and then having them participate in actually making um, a watershed map. I didn't ha the final map is from this workshop is still not put together um, entirely, so there's just a tiny piece in the bottom right-hand corner of um, each, each participant was given a panel um, to um, make their mark in the bigger picture. Um, the other motivation for making work that's not activist um, is more academic and sort of geeky, but um, I'm interested as an artist in modes of representation, and um, I'm interested in the idea of uh, both our perceptual understanding of landscape, the way that we um, move around the world and view ourselves in it through our vision and our senses, um, and then also a more analytical um, understanding of landscape, which sort of speaks to um, what Matt was saying about this sort of God view, but um, when you have a systems view, a map allows you for a larger perspective and a more systems view of how your you know, perspective of moving through the world fits into a bigger picture. Um, and so a lot of my work sort of experiments with the intersection of those two modes of representation um, and tries to figure out the connection between them. So this is um, kind of, I don't know if these images really make sense to you out there, but um, this was something that I made as a proposal for a project for an outdoor sculpture. Um, it's a camera obscura that the projection screen is actually a laser cut topographic map of the watershed uh, region. And then when you look into the, if this um, camera obscura will be placed somewhere along uh, the trail that goes along the stream. And when you look inside of it, images from the local surrounds will be projected onto the map of that region. So there's a sort of layering or merging of those two forms of understanding the world. How, this, how the little picture fits into the big picture. Um, this is another experiment in that. This was a, a web mapping project that I made um, where users could upload images and stories um, to specific points 
in the watershed so that there was that layering of the big picture with people's individual stories. Um, ultimately, the thread that runs through all the work and all of my motivation, no matter um, whether it's activist or um, whether it's more academic, is the idea of connection. Um, what I'm interested in is, I don't know why this does this. <laughs> um, what I'm interested in is allowing for the possibility of connectedness, whether it's an, an audience member finding themselves in a map or um, the connection between different modes of representing landscape, um, or understanding how a watershed looks like the uh, vascular structures in a leaf and in our own bodies, um, and that there's a certain order about this world that seems very chaotic, and that we're a part of it, and that we're also responsible to it. And that's all I have to say. Thank you.